So good to be with you this morning. I feel like I'm yelling. If I am, it's just because I'm excited. It's been one of those mornings beginning to uh, just see fall coming into focus, which I don't want to rush past the summer, especially the next two days. Crazy heat wave, right? Stay cool. But there's just something about the rhythm of the fall, the rhythm of the seasons, the excitement, anticipation that kind of breeds. And I start thinking about football and I start thinking about colors changing. I start thinking about chili. I start thinking about, um, you know, going on walks. I start thinking about campfires and s'mores and, oh, it's just fun, right? So good morning, Bart. Morning, Vera. Oh, Terry, it was so good to talk to you on Sunday, Terry. I really appreciate it. Uh, friends, you know, this morning, yesterday, I, I we talked a little bit about how the world says knowledge is power, but yet God's word reminds us that it's actually trust because we realize how powerless we are. It's trusting in the one who is powerful and God who actually gives us true power because power is found in this, I guess, just safety, this peace, this understanding of who I am, of where I start, of where I end, that God's placed me in a certain place for a certain time, but I have limitations. And I think it's often when we exceed those limitations, when we try to push beyond them, when we expect others to to meet us where we're at, that it breeds this sin, this really in Genesis 3, that what sin really was is for Adam and Eve to be more than Adam and Eve, to them to esteem, to be God, to press further than they were told. And what's interesting about that is they were given such limited boundaries. I think the way that I often think about God or the way that I did think about him is that there's so many things that God's on, on the outlook for. He's going to, he's trying to put me in a box. He's trying to hold me back. He's trying to, and reality, I'm putting him in a box because God's given me such immense freedom. Like, is there a single rule in scripture that you go, ah, I wish, I wish I could murder. What? Oh, I wish I could steal. I wish I could like, there's no rule that God's given, no law that he's laid out that's not logical. That we can't at the end of the day say that that's for our good. So the problem isn't with the law, the problem is with our heart. And the problem with that is, is that we're all human. And so we end up pushing beyond our limits with God, but also beyond our limits with one another that in turn we end up sinning against one another. And one of the deepest sins I'm finding in my own life as I do my own internal work is the sin of unforgiveness. That I somehow, in some ways, have placed myself in a seat with God or next to God in the role of God. And I've determined that judgment is what's needed. All the while, I forget the forgiveness that's been given to me. That there are those that are sitting in that same seat waiting on God to judge me. And so in Proverbs, there's a statement that says it's a glory to overlook an offense. And I often think the way that I've read that is that it's like, oh, act like it didn't happen. No, the way that I've, I've heard it phrased is that forgiveness is simply refusing to hold resentment against someone. So it's to overlook that opportunity I have to be resentful, to be vengeful, to be judgmental. Because it's not just that we act like it didn't happen, it's that we act like God's the one that will determine what happened. God's the one that will determine retribution. God's the one that will give justice. God is the one that is working on our behalf. And also the thing I forget often is he's working on behalf of that other person. The goal of forgiveness isn't my moral resoluteness. The goal of forgiveness is my own internal healing, but it's also the goal to see that other person won over towards Christ. I'm not saying that's easy. I think it's hard. I think it's abundantly hard as I've learned that there are deep scars but in that I want to know Jesus more and it's not as if God says forgive and doesn't know what that feels like he knows what the piercing thorns feels like he knows what the whips on a back feels like he knows what the the jabbed in nails feel like he knows what pain is but he doesn't just know physical pain he knows what betrayal is he knows what abandonment is he knows what hatred is. He knows what the mocking is. He knows what it is to be slandered and denied. And, and so I guess what I would encourage you is rather than to sit stewing in those feelings, to surrender them one day at a time, maybe even one minute at a time. And so that's what I'm praying for me today. And that's what I'm praying for you as well. God, I thank you so much. 
that while I was yet an enemy, hateful, weak, your word tells me that it was at the right time, at that time, at my worst, not my best, that you died for me. God, I love the idea of forgiveness. It's so hard for me to practice. Help me to slow down, to see something beneath the story. Help me to not avoid hurt, to not ignore hurt. But instead, God, to press on through it, to grow in it. Father, I know that as muscles tear, they grow back stronger. I know that that it really is hard for me to see on this side of the pain the strength that's going to endure, that's going to be developed. So God, help me to not fix my eyes on the pain, but to fix my eyes on you, the author and perfecter of my faith. God, I pray for us today that you would maybe bring an individual to mind, that we would have an opportunity to say, God, I need, or, I need your forgiveness. And on the flip side, God, help me to forgive them. And then that we would have the courage to say that out loud to them. God, I love you. I know that you love us more than we could possibly fathom or imagine. Help us to rest knowing that your love for us is not a mistake. That your love for us is not one that denies our condition, that denies our pain. But God, that you not only relate you're enmeshed in it. You're with us, in us, and working through us. And it's in your son's name that I pray. Amen. Love you guys. I'm praying for you. Pray for me. We've got an awesome lunch day with the Basso family that we're going to be sending them off. And um, it's been such a blessing to have them around. So please be praying for them. Be praying um, for us as we kick things off. They are high school and junior high students are meeting at Holmes Lake. And that's just a, a great time for them to get together. So be praying for Sam and Lucas and our student leaders. I don't know if you get to see the videos of them working um, this past Sunday at one of the local middle schools and just trying to serve, trying to get out and see something beyond ourselves because Jesus was always serving outside of himself, that he was always going to, that it wasn't that he came to be served, but to serve. And so what an awesome thing to see our kids learning that. So praying for all the different ministries that are going on and all the different things that are starting to just amp up as we plan um, for this coming fall. So be praying for us. And so love you guys. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.